Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I would like to go over how I make my 3D environments in Blender. So I always start off with the default scene and delete the default cube, of course. And it depends on what I want to do. If I want to make a landscape, I will add a plane. If I want to make a building or something else, I will add a cube. So most of the time I'll just add a plane and then edit mode, uh, select everything and subdivide it a bunch of times until it looks uh, like this just have a lot of geometry and then with proportional editing uh, just select some vertices and create some hills some rough hills just make sure you cannot see the edge of the plane because it will look ugly in the render just something like this when i've done this i will find a spot for my camera and I am snapping the camera to my view by pressing Ctrl, Alt and Zero on the numpad. If you do not have a numpad, you can go to Edit Preferences, go to Input and click this Emulate Numpad. What it will do is one through zero keys on your keyboard and emulate it as a numpad. If I'm using Blender on a laptop, I don't use that because I really like pressing one, two and three for the different selection methods. Uh, what I will do instead, because I only use the numpad for like snapping to these orthographic views. So some, some way you can do that without having to emulate the numpad is by pressing Alt and then middle mouse clicking and dragging to a side which you want to view. So if I now press Alt and uh, middle mouse button from here to here, it will go in the X axis, as you can see here. And it's a really uh, great tip for if you are on a laptop. So what I will do is position the camera. When I'm doing this, I will change the resolution I want the render to be in. But um, lately I've been doing uh, 1920 by 1080 because of the YouTube thumbnails. Um, I like uh, 3x4 as well, this for now. So now we have the landscape and what I can do um, if we want to add some texture to the, the ground is go to my modifiers and select the displays, add a new texture, go to this panel and change the type to clouds or something else. Clouds works works the best for me. Change the size here, the size of the, of the, of the texture. You can bug, go back to the modifier and change the strength to um, make it more subtle and change the mid level of where it starts. I'll leave that uh, default for now. And this adds a little bit more texture, so you can see without and with. What I tend to do is if I see some cool pictures on the internet, I will save them and save them to a reference folder. So for this video, I am going to replicate this photo I found on pexels.com, which is a free stock image and stock video provider. So let's actually just do the three by four. Grab the image from the reference folder and just drag it into Blender from our Explorer and drop it. And this will create the background for the camera. And if you want this in the scene, you can go out of the camera and do it again. And this is an empty. It works a bit better than, than importing as planes because you can actually set this to uh, show up in front uh, with the depth here. So you can see through everything and just see the picture. And I like the, having this for reference. Something I noticed with fog is that in Blender it doesn't really keep the, the color on the image if you have a lot of fog. So we're going to create a workaround for that. I'm not going to make a, a one by one copy of the image because I think that is uh, a bit boring. So general next step for me is adding uh, some grass or some lights to see what I'm doing. I want to render this in cycles because it works better with foliage and uh, greenery. So let's add a HDRI and I'm going to use this uh, HDRI uh, add-on I paid for, which you can use some HDRIs from HDRI Haven or Polyhaven as it's now called. And it looks uh, okay for now. Okay, we can change that later. Don't forget to save and you can see the horizon here and we can just add another plane, subdivide it like three or four times and then just uh, big little hill this can be really low poly because you won't see it it will just be for blocking the horizon and don't be distracted by everything that's outside the camera view so press ctrl b and drag a selection box around the camera like this 
So now you are not distracted by anything that's outside of the camera view and you won't pay attention to that. So what I would like to do now is add some grass. So open the polygon add-on and you can use G scatter for this or some other add-ons. Just your own assets that works fine as well. And now we have added grass. And one problem is that the scaling is a little bit off. You can grab the ruler to see this more clearly. This is 20 meters by 20 meters. So the scaling of the grass is a little bit off and that is because we did not apply the scale of course. And what you can see in the picture is that it has a dark green grass and a lot of mud. So we are going to create the mud right now and the path. And what we can do with this is we can go to uh, edit mode, press W once to have the circular select. And we can see the camera here and we want the path to go like this. And by pressing Ctrl and plus on the numpad, again you can emulate the numpad. We can expand the selection and we can go to this vertex group, add a new vertex group and click assign. What we can do now is go back to the go back to the particle system, go to vertex groups, density, and select our group we made. And this will get all of the grass on our path and we can invert this by pressing this and now we have a clear path now i want to add some trees uh, i'm just going to press shift and a right mouse click to snap my cursor to where i want to import the asset let's go to the this uh, coniferous um, trees and select one I think the one in the pictures is uh, one of these, maybe the Cedrus or whatever. I am not a treeologist, so I wouldn't know. Usually for trees I want to go back to solid mode so I don't get distracted by all the noise by moving around. And I find it really helpful to go in the camera view, because then I can see what is actually ending up in the render. We can duplicate this, but we can also press Alt D and press sh Shift D to duplicate and this will create a duplicate length. Everything refers back to the original one. So we can change this and it change, uh, changes. So this is why we save regularly. Blender crashed, not, the, not, not a big deal, it didn't lose anything. We can give uh, this plane right here just to quickly the same material as this one by pressing uh, by selecting both, but having uh, the one with the material active, then pressing Ctrl L and link materials. It will have the same material. So now for the fog, if we add a cube and just uh, put it in the middle of the scene and scale it up, and then add the normal fog material, which I would show in my videos, just a new deleting this and the volume scatter you can go to rendered view and then you will see it's a little dense right now so 0.1 it kind of get, gets rid of all the, the color in the image and that's just something we do not want so my solution for this is by adding a emission dragging this emission to the volume and then setting the strength to 0.01 so as you can see, it uh, gets rid of all the, the color in the image and that's just really not what we want. So emission is the best uh, substitute in this scenario. It works better for like this uh, thick morning mist, which is uh, mostly just really white. Emission is also better for performance. Uh, in this situation, it's look better. You can change the color a little bit. And I really like this. Uh, just a little bit of, of orange. You can also add a gradient check texture. These are some things that I don't... Uh, this, these are not like my normal things that I would do. But I'm just showing my process right now for, for this particular scene. So there's a less uh, mist on the ground and a lot more in the sky which is exactly what we wanted because if you look at the reference you see it's really white here because of the sky and not a lot here so this is uh, really easy it was really fast 
I think it was like uh, 30 minutes, which is, uh, I don't really spend that uh, little time on a, a project, but this was really fast. You can add some interesting things here from my asset pack, which I will be releasing soon. Go to my asset browser and select the file. I have some really cool assets here. Maybe add a barrel or something right here. Just dragging this in. And this one as well. So there you have it. I really like this. These branches here. Really cool. You can see the sample count here. So if you go back to the camera and view what it's doing, and kind of uh, know what samples we need to render at. So it kind of sped up at around 64. So at 64, the um, render engine thought, oh, I have rendered everything. Times it by two, so 128 for now. This is just a way to not render excessive amounts of samples. And yeah, I think that's basically it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Just comment if you like what you see, if you like this new video format. Uh, leave a like comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.